is actually pretty funny. Uh, so Xi Jinping, the great uniter, our glorious supreme leader in a multipolar world, third, third term Xi, top Xi, uh, after coming fresh off the heels of, of uh, uh, trying to at least kickstart the process of ending the conflict in Yemen, solidifying or starting a relations, uh, normalizing relations between Iran and motherfucking Saudi Arabia. Not that, like, I'm being a little sarcastic here. Obviously, I have talked about this more uh, in detail before with the Saudi-Iran deal that China uh, put together. Um, you know, I don't know what that will look like. We'll see what happens there. But that glorious leader is now going to Russia to see, to, to have a little conversation with him. You know what I mean? Now, does this mean they're going to still start selling arms to Russia? Who knows? I mean, that's our thing. You better fucking watch your back, G. Let's see what he has to do. Let's see what he's going to do. If China ends the Ukraine-Russia uh, war, can you imagine? Uh, dude, that's not happening. That would be insane. Well, a major development anyway, let's take a look. The direction of the war in Ukraine. We learned this morning that Chinese President Xi Jinping will visit Russia next week to meet with Vladimir Putin in an apparent show of support. This comes on the heels of a mid-air confrontation between a U.S. surveillance drone and Russian fighter jets over the Black Sea. Video released by the U.S. military shows the moments before one of the jets clipped the drone Tuesday, causing it to crash. Weijia Jiang is at the White House. Weijia, good morning. Good morning. Chinese officials say Xi will be meeting with Putin from Monday through Wednesday of next week. It will be their first meeting in six. Oh God, I'm like trying to figure out how to do this. Xi Jinping on my ping to like come. <laughs> I mean, she is the correct way to say it. Isn't it Xi Jinping? <laughs> Stop throwing huzz. You know, it's good. I'll figure it out. I'll figure out a good way to say that. Six months and comes after she secured his historic third term as president. This meeting in Moscow also she. sends a strong message to Washington as tensions between both countries and the U.S. remain high. Chinese President Xi Jinping and his Russian counterpart Vladimir Putin last met in September 2022. Now, just over a year into Russia's invasion of Ukraine, the two world leaders are planning to meet again Monday. Both countries made the announcement Friday. With oh, God, I want to go to China so bad. Now that I did Japan, I got to go to China, dude. Holy fuck. Please, please. Dear leader, please allow me into your glorious nation. I want to see these tier one cities so bad. I want to ride the fucking high speed rail so bad, dude. Holy fuck. The Kremlin releasing a statement saying the two leaders will discuss the development of a partnership and will also. We're making fun of Chinese names, huh? Yeah, yeah, baby. The number one, the number one don't stop Asian hate uh, broadcast in the United States of America, me. I love, I love the, uh, you're being quite cynophobic, sweeties, uh, in the chat, dude. There is, you will not find a stronger defender uh, when there are defensible things that China does than me, motherfucker. Shut the fuck up. So sign important bilateral documents. This comes on the heels of a report by Politico that Chinese companies have been sending assault rifles, body armor, and drone parts to Russian entities. The shipments took place between June and December of 2022, according uh -oh. to customs data unconfirmed by CBS News. On the Takeout podcast, White House spokesman John Kirby told Major Garrett Thursday, China should think twice before providing lethal weapons to Russia. We don't believe that it's in China. China should think twice. That's our game, bro. Chill. Chill. <laughs> Damn, man. You can really order anything out of AliExpress? Yeah, I mean, quite literally, as a matter of fact, here it is. Uh, exclusive Chinese made drone retrofitted and weaponized down in Eastern Ukraine. Sea drones used by Russian military. China is selling on Alibaba. So yeah, when you say like, damn, you can buy anything off Alibaba. Yeah, no, literally like you can actually.
You can, yeah, you can buy the fucking tunnel boring machine on Alibaba, dude. Like, you can buy anything on AliExpress. Dude, dude, dude. These motherfuckers about to sell a Hadron Collider, okay? It's like not even that expensive, too. What the fuck? Like, this is a car. And it's half off. Like, should I buy this? <laughs> I got a bunch of streamers together to buy one of the boring tunnels. Boring tunnel machines. There's no way this is a fr there's free shipping for this. There's a 75-day buyer protection money-back guarantee, too. You could buy anything but Jack Moss Freedom. Yeah, why would I do that? Not going to lie, some of the mountains in the United States deserve a hole in them. You can make it happen. Dude, that'd be so fun. <laughs> You'd be a fool not to buy the open box, 50% off, free shipping, boring machine. <laughs> I don't know where to put this, dude. Okay. CBS, G is selling uh, weapons uh, to Russia. Reuters, G is trying to broker peace in Ukraine. Booyah, 69, 69, 69. Thank you for the five. Get the subs. I mean, I think the truth is somewhere in between. I understand the whole anti-hegemonic angle and the obvious economic benefits of a partnership with Russia, but I still don't see why China considers this worthwhile considering the way they've been trying to stay out of the crosshairs of the West as much as possible while they build up power and prosperity. It's one of those expending political capital situations that doesn't add up to me. I agree. I, I, I said this already. Uh, you cannot, if there's one thing you cannot defeat the United States on, it's, it's selling weapons of war. So I don't understand what diplomatic purpose this would have to uh, continue the, the uh, efforts and give a lifeline to Russia in any meaningful capacity. Like staying on the sidelines and simply stating from afar like, oh yeah, well, you know, maybe you shouldn't do that, but we're just not going to, you know, give our immediate, we're not going to give our immediate support to the West. That alone, like the, the Indian style of diplomacy the indian diplomacy in this circumstance i think is more beneficial if you are trying to be a, a world power a superpower in the in this uh field it's like that's what india did india was like oh yeah we love the west but also like uh we're not really gonna say something too bad about russia now so they can get russian gas and oil and and sell it to the western world right at a higher markup being the mediator that's like great it's great for them. Don't really understand why uh, China is not, uh, if China is like straight up fucking dumping weapons into Russia, they're not going to make enough money off that. It doesn't make sense. The weapons were private orders not sent by the government. Yeah, but nothing in China happens without the scrutiny of the government. Let's be real. China's best interest to be on that side of the war in in that way to help. That's like saying that's like saying the the pipelines blew up uh, completely outside of the purview of the United States. Like, come on, come on, come on, come Mr. On. Putin, slaughter innocent Ukrainians. Uh, we don't believe it's in China's best interest, but obviously that they they'll have a they'll have a choice to make. Just days ago, a Russian fighter jet collided with an unarmed American drone, forcing it to crash into the Black Sea. Video released by U.S. officials Thursday shows the Russians making two passes from behind the drone, dousing it in a cloudy stream of jet fuel before clipping it. To demonstrate uh, publicly uh, 
what type of actions the Russians had taken, we felt that it was important to provide this imagery. CBS News has learned that those Russian pilots were acting on orders from military leaders. And in another development, this morning, Slovakia announced it will join Poland in sending fighter jets to Ukraine in the coming days, making them the first NATO nations to do so. The White House says that that decision does not impact the U.S. assessment that Ukraine does not need fighter jets right now, and the U.S. does not plan to send any. Oh, shit. Chill, bro. Poland, on the other hand, um, Paul Keating, China has committed the largest sin in the eyes of the United States. What is the sin to develop an economy as big that is as big as the United States? Oh shit! Committed in the eyes of the United States, the great sin of internationalism. And what is that sin? To develop an economy as big as the United States. That's the sin. They will never. The Americans will never condone or accept a state as large as them. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm just not fighting in this, okay? Like, I, I don't know about you guys. I don't know about you guys, but I'm not fucking fighting in this, okay? Straight up. I don't give a fuck. I'll go live in a mountaintop. I don't give a single fuck, you know what I mean? Conscientious objector status immediately, you know? I can't do it. I got weak knees, okay? I got bad knees, man. I got bad knees. It's not happening, Okay? You think I'm going to put my body on the fucking line so that, like, Raytheon's fucking bottom line looks better? Get the fuck out of here, dude. No shot. I'm buying one of those Alibaba Express tunnels, and I'm tunneling down all the way to China until I come out of the other side, okay? Getting no scope by pro CS players? Yeah, it's just so fucking stupid. So dumb. Come to Canada. You think America's hat is not involved in this? You crazy. There's like, like, there's very little places you can go to on the planet if like America and China get into any sort of heated, uh, any additional heat. Oh God. It's just like, it's so fucking annoying, dude. There is so much more food to eat. Okay. I have not had my entire life's worth of a five Wagyu. I need to go to Japan. I need to go to China still. You cannot end the world before I do these things, okay? I got to fire off way more nuts. I got ropes to fucking unload. And I got delicious meats to consume. And you motherfuckers are trying to end the world, dude. It's bullshit. Metal Gear Solid remaster potentially in the works you're gonna sit here and act like the world should end before we play metal gear solid and metal gear solid 2 once again maybe metal gear solid 3 put that in there for good measure i haven't finished one piece luffy has not found the hidden pirate treasure i want to see that shit you mean to tell me we're gonna end the planet i made commitments motherfucker i made commitments I'm 500 goddamn episodes deep into One Piece lore. You're going to tell me that we're ending the fucking world? No shot. No fucking shot. Absolutely not. Fuck no. No. Bullshit. Everybody needs to chill the fuck out, dude. Elden Ring DLC still not announced. Got to wait for that until the world ends. Yeah, no, for sure. I don't like that. I would have preferred they remain in poverty, 20% of humanity forever. But the fact that China is now, you know, an industrial economy larger than the United States, larger, according to IMF, 20% larger. They say, hang on, this is not in the playbook. China has committed in the eyes of... Fucked up. I just don't know. Yeah, Kodor, Kodor remake still not released. Absolutely fuck no. Stop it. Stop it. Many ad break segues to come. You know what I mean? I got a long life ahead of me, hopefully. Fuck that. Underlying. Don't want to see the end of the world yet. You know what I mean? But if you want to see this broadcast in an uninterrupted fashion without any sort of ad breaks whatsoever, then all you need to do is subscribe, baby. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. 
If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a fucking Twitch Prime. Twitch Prime is fucking free as long as you got an Amazon Prime account. Connect it to your fucking Twitch account. There you go. Wham, bam, thank you, fam. Also, you can get gifted a fucking sub too. Evil Ez, thank you for the not, thank you for the fire get the subs. NP Sharky, thank you for the fire get the subs. Allowing 10 people to no longer see the fucking ads at the top of the hour. Very fucking nice. Nice. You're too old to be conscripted anyway. It doesn't matter if the world fucking ends. It just ends, you know what I mean? Here's a, here's a three minute ad break now. All this stuff about the need of nuclear power is the idea. Go fucking warm up my chicken. Us or will threaten us. Uh, now, th this is a distortion and it's untrue. Right. China does not threaten the United States. Nobody can threaten the United States. It's got, it's got 10,000 kilometres of sea between the Chinese coast and California. It's got the Atlantic Ocean on the other side. It has a massive country with... Uh, in space, in uh, land mass and friends in Canada on the north and Mexico on the south and the greatest armaments in all history. China has committed in the eyes of the United States the great sin of internationalism. And what is that sin? To develop an economy as big as the United States. That's the sin. They've got as big as the US. The Americans will never condone or accept a state as large as them, you know. And that's what China presents. China's mere presence. I mean, they would have preferred they remain in poverty 20% of humanity forever. But the fact that China is now, you know, an industrial economy larger than the United States, larger, according to IMF, 20% larger, they say, hang on, this is not in the playbook. This, this, this is not in the playbook. <laughs> you know, what an affront. This is about the maintenance of US strategic hegemony in Asia. Now, this is a country which has no, no, no land in the metropolitan zone of Asia. There's no US in Asia. It's 10,000 kilometres across the Pacific to the coast of California. So they are not a metropolitan uh, Asian power, but they claim to be and wish to be the primary strategic power in Asia. You so, know, if so what are the Chinese supposed to say to that? Oh, that's OK. We've been here 4,000 years. We've developed, you know, we've, we've been subjugated by every bugger known to man. We've developed a decent economy, a decent standard of living, you know, a shelter, accommodation, education, you know. Uh, that's our sin, is it? That's our sin. And we've got to be superintended by your Navy, <laughs> you know, by the US Navy. Could you just imagine if the, if the Chinese Blue Water Navy decided to do their sightseeing six miles off the coast of California. Could you imagine the brouhaha that would go on? You got to go to Aussie land before the world ends? Bro, I want to go to Aussie land, but like the Aussies are, the Aussies are playing a very interesting tightrope game here, right? Because on the one hand, you got, on the one hand, you got like Australia's entire economy being reliant. Okay. Entire economy being reliant on China. Okay. On the other hand, they're getting nuclear submarines from the United States of America. Okay. And what I don't understand is like, bro, you are not the Philippines. Like what you, you, you're going to turn your country into a fucking, uh, you know, a uh, 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 sea base. Kind of slazy with it. You just don't fucking get it. Friendly Geordies and Boy Boy will protect you. Mate, Friendly Geordies can't even fucking protect his own fucking house. What the fuck do you mean? Bro, Friendly Geordies is currently, like, literally having his fucking home firebombed. What do you mean? He's, probably, he's perhaps the worst person to hang out with if I'm in fucking Australia, dude. If I'm trying to evade scrutiny from any kind of government whatsoever. Out of pocket, bro. I mean, it's, it's so fucked up. Give every citizen in Perth a javelin and this war will be over so fucking quick. Don't stop, mate. We need those subs to defend our small island nation. No, you're just, it's, it's just money. It's a money-making operation. You're going to be able to make, like, submarines. You're going to make nuclear submarines. That's going to be a jobs provider for the Aussies, right? 
but it's also additional it's also additional fucking protection, right? And by that I mean you'll be able to surveil Chinese activity in the fucking sea. Right? That's not a fucking accent. Yeah, all right. Well, everyone knows what. Any non Aussie who says they like Vegemite is no taste buds and should be locked away. It's hundreds of billions of dollars for submarines that won't exist for a decade. Yeah, they're just like making money. It's a money making operation. Uh Did you know that Friendly Jordis was called racist by one of the politicians he mocks because uh, he, the politician is Italian? I'm not joking. I do love that. I, I, oh God, that's awesome.